Greetings, this is Matt Fiello, Technical Marketing Engineer, and I'm back with another Intersight Managed Mode Expert Series video. We're still talking about domain profile policies, and today we're going to be talking about the VLAN policy. So with that, let's get to a couple slides of information, followed by a short demonstration. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about this uh, VLAN domain policy. So this, this policy is going to include all the VLANs that you need to configure on your FIs, on your fabric, for uplink. So if you have uh, any server, uh, any VNIC in that server that's going to be needing certain VLANs, then they have to be populated in this uh, VLAN policy. Um, and then they get deployed with a domain profile. It, it's very much a two-step process, just like legacy traditional UCS manager, where you added VLANs to the LAN cloud uh, for the fabric, right? And then you went to uh, each and every service profile, usually your VNIC templates, and added the VLANs there um, uh, and so forth. So the purpose of the policy here is to configure your, your fabric VLANs on the FIs. It also lets you designate a native VLAN. And, and bear in mind, there's a difference here. Uh, in UCS Manager, uh, the default VLAN of one was already native. Well, in IMM, you have to actually choose which VLAN that you want to be native, if, if any, to go upstream. Um, you also have the ability to configure private VLAN options, um, but we're really going to talk about that uh, in a separate video in of itself, so I won't be addressing uh, private VLANs uh, in this video. Okay, continuing on, uh, as we suggested earlier, uh, this policy uh, gets deployed with a domain profile. That means any uh, adding of VLANs, modifying or deleting of VLANs, you're going to subsequently uh, redeploy that domain profile for those changes to take effect. If you do fabric specific VLANs, uh, you change uh, your A fabric VLAN policy and then your B fabric VLAN policy, just it's going to be two deployments or redeployments of that domain profile. So let's talk about some, uh, some as far as recommendations. I mean, it's going to be different for, for every customer, but um, some key principles here. Um, so all your host VLANs, all your server VLANs need to be included in this domain VLAN policy. Um, you could have a single native VLAN upstream for the fabric interconnects. We're not talking about a disjoint layer two scenario. So a single native VLAN on your uplinks. And I spelled out the difference in IMM from UCS manager. Um, if you want a native VLAN that, and you want it to be the default of one, you have to designate that in the policy as being a native VLAN. Whereas in UCS manager, by default, the default VLAN was already native. So just uh, bear in mind for those uh, that are using native VLANs, you're going to have to actually designate it in intersite managed mode. Obviously, a default VLAN one is enabled on all ports. Um, that's kind of the definition. You can't change the default VLAN of one. You can't modify it. It's there. It's part of the system. It's going to get uplinked. Uh, if you don't wish to use uh, the default VLAN or VLAN one, then it can be pruned easily upstream. Uh, next hop switch. And uh, you can have additional VLANs designated as native for like east-west intra-domain traffic. So traffic uh, that stays within the fabric interconnects that does not go northbound. But again, that's more of a server policy uh, uh, thing and we'll talk about that at the appropriate time when we talk about like Ethernet network group policies on the server side. Now, as far as uh, verification goes, if you want to check your VLANs uh, within the Fabric Interconnect, you can uh, secure shell in and connect to the NXOS menu and do a show VLAN brief. And that's going to show you uh, your, your uh, defined VLANs uh, and what ports they're enabled on and their status, etc. You can also drill into a, a specific VLAN. So in this uh, example here, uh, we connected to NXOS and we did a show VLAN name and then the name of the VLAN you wish to look at. As with all IMM expert series videos, I like to include a slide that graphically portrays where the policy is used um, just to provide some, some context. 
Um, so the, in this case, the, the domain profile directly accesses the VLAN policy. Now you can have a single VLAN policy because since your VLANs likely are going to be the same for Fabric A and Fabric B. Or if you choose to go uh, the route of, hey, I only want to touch one fabric at a time, uh, you can have a VLAN policy for Fabric A and then one for Fabric B. Even though they'll have the same VLANs, uh, you can choose to deploy to Fabric A first uh, and then choose to deploy to Fabric B. Uh, and of course, when we're talking deploy, that means uh, redeploy the domain profile. Non-disruptive change, uh, so it's just completely up to you and your best practices. Okay, so uh, for a short demonstration here, we are in Intersight and we are in Infrastructure Service and we've clicked on Policies and we're going to create a new policy in the top right. Uh, I'm going to use my filter for UCS Domain Policies. Click VLAN for VLAN Policy. Give it a meaningful name. And I'll pretend I'll do a fabric specific policy. So when I do fabric specific policies, I like to tag on a dash A or a dash B accordingly. You can also use actual tags, um, system tags, which uh, get instantiated in the API. Um, you can also fill in the description, all good stuff. As far as the VLANs go, we're gonna add VLANs. We're gonna give it a prefix, whatever you want. It can add specific VLANs in individually, or we can add a range. So I'm going to do a range 100 through 110. Uh, default uh, auto allow on uplinks, which means these VLANs automatically get pinned to all uplink ports or port channels. Okay. The only time you take this off is if you're doing disjoint, disjoint layer two, and we'll talk about that in a separate video. Also, uh, here is your private VLAN capabilities. Um, uh, enable VLAN sharing. So again, that will be a separate video. But what we do need is we have to attach a multicast policy. So we've already covered that in another video about multicast. Um, so reference that video if you have not already watched it. Uh, you absolutely have to have a multicast policy with each VLAN. Uh, thus the asterisk there. It's mandatory. So click add. And here is the difference. Uh, you have the, the system VLAN, the default VLAN of one, okay? But it is not designated as, as native in Intersight Managed Mode. So if you were wanting an upstream native VLAN, okay, uh, then you're gonna need to tick this box here, set native VLAN ID. You're gonna need to actually put the VLAN ID in, okay, and then click Create. Okay, so that concludes our uh, demonstration. Okay, and that also uh, concludes our, our video for creating VLAN policy. I hope you were able to learn something from this video. Uh, please stay tuned for more Intersight Managed Mode Expert Series videos. Thank you.